Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to unbox the FL Sun Q5 Delta 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're unboxing the FL Sun Q5 Delta 3D printer. And a big thanks to FL Sun for sending this printer to me for review. It's been here for a few weeks now, so I figured it was about time to take it out of the box, put it together, and see what it could do. The Q5 is intended to be a beginner-friendly and budget-friendly Delta printer. I have very little knowledge or experience with Delta printers, to be perfectly honest. I've never even used a Delta, so I'm curious to see how easy this is to put together and use. But even though I haven't used one, I've seen them printing, and the movement is fascinating. Instead of a bed that moves back and forth, and a print head that moves left and right and also up, a Delta printer has three uprights with a pair of arms attached to a slider on each upright that moves up and down. The other ends of those arms are attached to the part with the hot end, which is called the end effector, and that's pretty much the extent of my Delta knowledge. Well, okay, I know the build plates are round instead of square, and I know Delta printers are about twice as tall as the height of their build volume to account for the movement of the arms. Okay, so that is the extent of my Delta knowledge. Those of you with Delta printers, please forgive me. I know I'm probably calling parts by the wrong names. Remember, this is actually the first Delta printer that I've ever seen in person. Well, okay, I haven't actually seen it yet, but that's going to change in a few minutes. Real quick, though, let's go over some of the specs, and then I'll open up the box and then we'll see what's inside, put it together, and hopefully I'll gain some Delta experience. The FL Sun Q5 is about 560 millimeters tall. Well, more like 710 millimeters, including the spool holder, and it's about 330 millimeters on each side. It has a 200 millimeter diameter by 200 millimeter high build volume. Now you'll notice I'm not mentioning X and Y measurements for the build volume, and that's because Delta printers don't have a cubic build volume. Instead, they have a cylindrical build volume. So that 200 millimeter diameter is definitely going to be smaller than a 200 by 200 millimeter square bed, but that's okay. After all, a lot of things will fit in a 200 millimeter diameter, 200 millimeter tall cylinder. And that 200 millimeter diameter build plate is an ultra base style glass bed with that etched texture that holds onto the prints when it's hot and releases when it cools down. It has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle fed by a Bowden tube from a Titan style extruder. And it's got a 32 bit mainboard controlled by a color touchscreen LCD, which is a bit on the smaller side at about 2.8 inches measured diagonally. There's also a full size USB type B port around back, as well as a micro SD card slot. Unlike almost every other printer I own, there are no adjustments to be made to the bed. There aren't any leveling knobs. Instead, the printer comes with a detachable bed sensor, so you can calibrate the distance between the bed and the nozzle. It's not fully automatic. I kind of want to call it semi-automatic because you have to manually attach the sensor, perform the calibration, and then remove the sensor. But this isn't something you have to do before every print because, again, the bed really isn't going to move much since it's bolted in place. Well, okay, with that out of the way, I'm kind of excited to get it put together and start using it. Shall we? This box is pretty compact compared to the last few printers I've gotten, so let's see what's inside. First, we have some packing foam. And then we have the three uprights. There's a power cord and the user manual, and it says right on the manual, your first Delta. Well, wait a minute, how'd they know? There's a USB cable, the spool holder, and a pretty big scraper. And there's also the little arms that connect the slidey parts of the uprights to the end effector. There's another little layer of foam. There's also a bag of tools and nuts and bolts and zip ties and the micro SD card and a USB card reader. There's the bed probe module. There's the end effector module. 
And there's the big triangular housing, which is the top of the printer containing the power supply and the electronics. And finally, under a bit more foam, there's the printer's base with the circular build plate. Also tucked away in here, there is a small sample of filament. Okay, let's get this box out of the way. Then we can get the base and the top up here on the workbench. And there we go. That's everything. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the manual, which is sort of a big trifold brochure affair with lots of color pictures. I kind of wish it had larger pictures so I could see more detail on how things go together. But it's a nice glossy document and it appears to cover assembly in about five steps. And then covers the leveling process, filament loading, and printing. Well, let's go ahead and get this put together. First, it's a good idea to set the power supply's input voltage to match your local power source. For me, that's 115 volts. The assembly is actually pretty straightforward, and in fact, there's a really good assembly video included on the micro SD card that comes with the printer. I actually should have watched that first before trying to follow the printed guide. There's more information in the video, and it has better close-up shots of plugging in connectors. But the essential points are, bolt each of the three uprights to the top of the printer, and plug in the stepper motors and the in-stop switches. Then bolt all of that to the base of the printer. After that, bolt the parallel arms to the slidey things. Once that's done, bolt the other side of the arms onto the end effector. And make sure they're tight, you don't want these coming loose. After the parallel arms are done, bolt on the spool holder. Then plug in the end effector, which is easy because you just match up the color-coded connectors. After that, connect the Bowden tube and plug in the bed cables. Okay, so that's it. That was easy to put together. Now that it's built, we can plug it in and power it on. But before we can print, though, we need to calibrate the distance between the nozzle and the bed. And yes, it's still generally known as leveling the bed. The on-screen button for this is auto-level, but it's not entirely automatic. I'm calling it semi-automatic leveling because you have to manually attach the bed probe and plug it in, then start the probing procedure, then unplug and remove the probe when it's done. But let's go through it so you can see what's involved. First, with the nozzle cool, plug in the bed probe's cable. When you do this, make sure the cable goes between the two parallel arms on that side of the effector. Then, attach the probe to the bottom of the effector. It's held on magnetically. On the touch screen, tap the tool button and then tap auto level. On the next screen, it walks you through each part of the process. The auto level button flashes to attract your attention, so tap that button. Confirm that the probe is connected. The printer will begin probing the bed. This process takes about two minutes, so I've sped it up a bit here. Once the printer has finished probing the bed, the effector moves back to the top of the printer. Unplug the probe and remove it. The Move Z0 button begins flashing, so tap that button. Confirm you've removed the probe, and the effector moves down toward the bed, stopping with the nozzle a few millimeters above it. Now the Adjust Z button begins flashing, so give it a tap. This is where the fine adjustments happen. With a piece of paper between the nozzle and the bed, use the plus and minus buttons to raise or lower the nozzle to get the nozzle close enough to the bed that you have a bit of friction on the paper between the two. When you have the nozzle height calibrated correctly, tap the Save button to save the setting. Now that the nozzle height is calibrated, it's time to load some filament and print a test file. To load filament, you'll heat the nozzle, then insert filament. I'll tap the Preheat button and then tap PLA. This heats the nozzle to 210 degrees C and the bed to 50 degrees C. So once the nozzle is up to temperature, get the loose end of your filament and use the flush cutters to cut a point on the end. Press the loading lever and start inserting the filament into the extruder. Keep pushing it until it's all the way down to the hot end. When the filament starts coming out of the nozzle, release the lever. You're done loading. Printing is pretty simple. From the main screen, tap the print button, then select a file to print. Confirm your selection and the printer will start to print it. If you need to fine tune the nozzle height on the first layer of a print, tap the option button, then tap more. On that screen, you can adjust the fan speed, printing speed, and nozzle height. I've found that I tend to need to adjust the nozzle a little closer to the bed on the first print after leveling. 
but the printer seems to remember this adjustment once it's done, so when you've got it looking good, tap the back button to leave this screen, and the printer will carry on with the print job. What's it look like when it prints? Well, here's a time lapse. So this is the knurled bolt test print from the card, printed in Amolin Silk Blue PLA. I noticed the temperature for the file was set a little high for PLA. It was 70 degrees C, but it didn't seem to hurt anything to leave it at that temperature. And two hours and 15 minutes later, the print came out great. I don't know what layer height this model is sliced at, but to me the print quality looks really good, and I didn't have any trouble getting the nut to thread onto the bolt. Also, just a side note, this filament looks like anodized aluminum, and I really like it. So, a few things I've noticed. Assembly of the printer is quite easy, but like I said earlier, you're better off following the video guide on the microSD card than the printed manual. The video has much better close-ups, but it needs to be updated to show the color-coded connectors on the end effector. The video has those connectors labeled with tape flags, so I'm glad FL Sun switched to using the color-coded connectors. They're just easier to match up making it more beginner friendly. The color touchscreen LCD is easy to use, but I found that when selecting a file to print, it shows every file name on the card, even file names beginning with a period. My other printers are able to filter these out. Now the reason that's a problem for me is that on Linux and Mac OS, files named with a leading period are generally considered to be hidden files. And Mac OS is bad about sprinkling these files here and there on hard disks and removable media, such as micro SD cards. So, if you're a Mac user and you're slicing files and putting them on the card for the printer, you will probably see these. I just have to ignore them when I'm trying to find the one that I want to print, but it would be nice if the printer could just avoid showing them. One other thing about the touchscreen, I've noticed that when I'm interacting with it, every time I tap a button on the screen, the printer stops moving for a split second. So, as weird as it sounds, I find myself waiting until the printer is printing infill before touching the screen to avoid potential zits or blobs on the outer surface of the print. When it comes to noise levels, the printer's motion system is pretty quiet, although I can definitely tell when retractions and de-retractions happen, because the extruder's gears kind of make a little squeaky sound. The fans aren't horribly loud, but they are noticeable. Now, the absence of a fan grill on the heatsink fan actually makes it quieter. I don't know why FL Sun chose not to put a fan grill there, so be careful not to stick your fingers or a tool into the fan blades. I've broken fan blades before by accidentally stabbing tools into them. On the bright side, because of how the end effectors cables are already connected up, replacing fans should be pretty simple to do. And the power supply doesn't have a fan, which helps keep the noise to a minimum. The version 2 dot something of Cura included on the micro SD card is pretty old, but it's got profiles for the FL Sun Q5 included, whereas the current version of Cura that you can download only has profiles for the FL Sun QQ and QQS. Now that said, you can set up a Cura profile for the Q5 using the QQ profile by editing the build volume settings to be 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters instead of the 260 millimeter measurements for the QQ. I like the look of the machine. The yellow trim pieces included in the aluminum extrusions add a nice little bit of personality to it. And although it's top heavy, with all the electronics and motors and power supply and all that stuff up here, it's stable enough that it's not going to just tip over at random in the middle of a print job. I do wish the cables running from the top of the printer down to the bed were a little more towards the back of the unit. And because the power input socket is a good 20 inches or half a meter above whatever surface you've got the printer on, I think the power cable could be a bit longer too. So is it worth the $250-ish retail price? Well, that price puts it between the Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 3 V2, both of which have a larger build volume at 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, so the Q5 can't compete with the Ender 3 on print volume. From what I've read, Delta printers are designed with speed in mind, and therefore the end effectors are as light as possible. But to really print fast, the printer needs an extruder and a hot end that can keep up with it. The V6 style hot end on this printer may have a hard time maintaining higher filament flow rates unless you crank the temperature up. But the Titan style extruder should be okay. It's got that 3 to 1 gear reduction drive, so it can push the filament to the hot end with more force and precision. 
So it depends on your needs. If you've done a little research and decided that you want to get started with Delta printers and you're looking for a printer with a reasonably sized build volume, I think the Q5 is a pretty safe bet. I didn't have any trouble at all getting it assembled and printing. I did a little looking around and it seems competitively priced against other Delta printers, plus I've seen it advertised for a little less at some online retailers. But having only just started using the Q5, I can't think of much that I'd want to change on it. I might see if Wham Bam Systems has a flexible magnetic build plate that'll fit it. I really like being able to remove a flex plate and just pop off a print without having to wait for a glass bed to cool. Anyway, I'll probably have a proper review after having used it for a few months and really gotten to know it. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool Delta style. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares, and an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great, and if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. Oh, and I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at, too. And if nothing else, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. It's absolutely free and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.